G'day everyone, this is DJ Cuts here and today I'm doing a review of the brand new MIDI Fighter Twister from DJ Tech Tools. If you've seen some of my videos on me mixing previously, you would see that I use the MIDI Fighter Spectra a lot. I absolutely love this controller, so I'm really interested to see how the MIDI Fighter Twister stacks up. But first of all, I've got to say a massive shout out to DJ Tech Tools, the people that make these controllers. They're such a passionate bunch of people and they do so much for the DJ scene and community as a whole. They do news, DJ gear reviews, MIDI maps, and they just give out so much out there to the DJ and controllerism scene. So massive shout out to you guys. And they use and design these controllers and sell them as a way to support their efforts to sort of build that DJ community. So if you haven't heard of them already, check them out, djtechtools.com. But what we're here for, the MIDI Fighter Twister. Now, this MIDI Fighter is, and this new controller is set to expand on some of their previous controllers. Previous controllers, you had these uh, 16 buttons, as you can see here, and the buttons only had two states. They had on when you press it, or off. And that's kind of limiting when you think about it. Each button can only do one thing and one thing only. You can toggle something on and toggle something off. The MIDI Fighter Twister aims to really expand on that, but you can still press each one of these 16 uh, knobs and press on them, but you can also twist the dials as well. And that allows you to not only have 16 buttons on the face, but also control parameters of effects, not only in DJ software like um, you know EQs, filters, but also in production software as well. So the capability of this controller is massively expanded. You also still have the shift registers on the side, which we'll go through very shortly. Um, it's a pretty special controller as well because it supports not only standard MIDI mode, but advanced HID mode. Advanced HID is kind of like a high resolution MIDI. It really allows you to send granular MIDI messages to the software and allows really fine control, which standard MIDI, uh, didn't really allow you to do to the level that this guy is doing. And also it includes an internal sequencer. And what that allows you to do is some killer things with the Tractor Remix decks, which we'll explore later in this video. But anyway, that's enough chat. Let's open the box on this thing and I hope you enjoy. So what do you get in the box of the MIDI Fighter Twister? As always, with all the MIDI Fighter products, you get this cool little box with uh, displaying an outline of the actual controller that's inside the product. It's kind of neat and unique, and um, when we open up the box, it's pretty simple. We've got the actual controller itself, which is the thing that, let's be honest, we really want, and uh, the USB cable as well to plug it in. There's also a warranty card, and I believe it also comes with a certificate of authenticity, but I've been using it for a couple of months now, and I don't know where that is. So, here it is, the MIDI Fighter Twister. Compare it to the standard MIDI Fighter, well, this is actually a MIDI Fighter Spectra, but the same layout, and you can see that we've got the same amount of controls. However, the biggest difference is these are still clickable, like the MIDI fighters, the normal ones, but also these dials can be twisted as well, hence the MIDI fighter twister. So we can control so many parameters in software, which I'll be talking about. As usual, very, very solid construction from the DJ Tech Tools guys. Fully rubberized, this is solid plastic on the bottom. Uh, we've got rubber feet so it doesn't slip when you're really hammering the controller very hard. A rubber outside cover. We've got the three shift register buttons on each side of the controller. And a USB port on the top. And this feels indestructible. I mean, you, I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but you can even see the thickness of the uh, metal going into the buttons is actually very thick. This is not flimsy at all. These controller knobs do not move and um, this thing will take a beating and last an absolute lifetime. So, um, yeah, build quality is great. The layout, fairly straightforward. We've got full RGB color LED, so I will actually plug it in right now for you and you can see what it looks like when we power this up.
awesome. So you can see all the different colors there. We've got the different colored LEDs underneath each light. As we twist the controller, you can see the lights lighting up and it shows the position of each dial on the controller. And um, we've got a lot of different modes for this controller, but I'll go through it when we've got it plugged into software. Looks really professional. And um, yeah, we'll get into it. Let's check it out. So the first thing you want to do when you get one of these MIDI fighters is you want to load up the MIDI fighter utility which you can download from the DJ Tech Tools website and it allows you to firstly check whether the latest software is running on your controller. As you can see here on the top left we've got the update firmware button. When you plug in your controller it will detect what controller has been plugged in and you can just click that button and then it will go and uh, check and hopefully flash the latest firmware with the click of a button, very, very easy. And also, it's a very simple piece of software to use. It allows you to customize the colors of the buttons on each control. Um, it also allows you to customize the colors of the buttons when they are turned on or off. So in the MIDI Fighter Twisters case, you can press it once to toggle the state of the buttons on and off, and we can change different colors. So for example, if I change all these different controls, to let's say be different colors up the top here I'll just run through it um, pick whatever and then I click send to MIDI fighter it will actually send those settings across and as we can see the colors have changed if we click on color they'll go to green so I press this button and as you can see when I hold it down it's actually changing that color so you can customize the controller and get the visual layout that you want and you might want to have different colors for different types of functions in software, but really easy for anyone to customize. All right, everyone. So what I'm going to show you now is how to use and set up the MIDI Fighter Twister with Tractor's Remix decks using a mapping called the Tractor Sequencer. This is really what I feel the MIDI Fighter Twister was built for. The advanced control of Tractor's Remix decks to allow you to do creative things in uh, DJ sets above and beyond what a normal DJ setup would really allow you to do. And uh, the first thing you want to do when you've got the Twister and you want to set it up is you go to maps.djtechtools.com. It's an absolutely awesome website. If you haven't seen it before, definitely check it out. It's got mappings for all the different types of DJ and uh, software and on all sorts of controllers not just the DJ Tech Tools ones and you want to find a mapping called Tractor Sequencer you click on that and then DJ Tech Tools will ask you to say sign in to download and what you got to do is go on there click the button download the zip file and extract it on your computer once you've done that plug in your MIDI fighter twister it'll appear here pretty and blue as you can see and then you want to launch Tractor so once Tractor is loaded, the first thing we see are the four decks. We're in four deck mode, so we've got four that have appeared here. And the first thing we want to do is set up the uh, Twister to be recognized by Tractor. The way we do that is by going Add, Import TSI, and Import Other. And we want to go browse to where we extracted that MIDI mapping that we just downloaded. And in here I've extracted this directory. And you can see there's two TSI files. Now TSI stands for Tractor Settings Information, I think it may as well do though. So I'm going to use the Remix deck on deck D, so I'm going to import the deck D mapping. So we're going to double click on that. And we can see in this list two things appear, deck D sequence clip triggers and deck D sequence deck controls. I got stuck on this for such a long time because uh, the MIDI, uh, the DJ Tech Tools video says that you should expect three things here, but in uh, version 1.4, I think, or 1.3, they updated the mapping so you only need two. So if you've only got two, that's totally okay. First thing we want to do is click on sequence uh, clip triggers. On the import, select our MIDI file twister, which has appeared there. Same with the output, then select sequence deck controls, import twister, output twister. Then what we want to do is we want to go to Dex Layout, we want to load a Remix deck, so we've got a Remix deck here, and then we want to browse to MIDI Clock. 
and we want to send the MIDI clock. As I mentioned before, the MIDI Fighter Twister has an internal sequencer. So that means that it's uh, in sequencing mode, relies very heavily on the timings being sent back and forth from Tractor in order to function. And it allows this controller to sort of natively keep in time with Tractor based on Tractor's timing information. As we can see, the controller is displaying red lights at the moment, and that is a good thing. It means that it's not detecting any timing information from Tractor, however, it has been recognized by the Tractor software. So we tick send a MIDI clock, as I said, and then in the, we must be in extended view here, we'll see the two effects panels at the top. And on this effects panel, there's a little metronome. We want to click that, and then we want to click the play and pause button. And hopefully, if that works, we click that, you'll see your MIDI fighter change. And that means that we're connected to Tractor, we're receiving timing information from Tractor, and we're ready to use the Twister to do some really cool stuff. Now I'll just run through the layout of this uh, controller. Down the bottom here in sequencing mode using this plugin, the bottom buttons are filters. So we click to turn the filter on and off, and we filter down and up. The next bank is to start and stop the sample and also the volume of the sample. The next row up is the pattern and uh, clicking it allows us to edit that pattern. And the top row is the sample selection and pressing it allows us to send each bank, which is divided horizontally here, or vertically, sorry, um, to Tractor's effects engine. So what we do is we should probably load up some sample packs into our remix decks. Now, each, uh, when, when we downloaded the mapping, the mapping actually came with a pre-done remix set called Ian's Sequencer Drum Kit. And that is two files. I will just pull them up really, really quickly for us all. So we've got these, uh, they're called track files, T-R-A-K. We've got Ian's Sequencer Drum Kit and 909 Remix Kit. We can just take that track file and drag it in to this folder, into the All Remix Sets folder and we can see that it's processing it all and then the 909 kit has been populated. Then we can just drag that kit over to the remix set and we're actually loaded. Now the remix set is, uh, as you can see, divided into four windows. They correspond to the vertical columns on our controller down this way and we can see lots of different samples. Now I'm gonna use the Ian Sequencer Drum Kit, really cool kit, and it's really great to get you started. So in this kit, we've got kicks, snares, hi-hats, and then some other sort of sound effects, percussions, all sorts of types of stuff. So on the top right-hand side of the controller, we've got a shift button there, and we can press that, and that means play. And I'm just gonna change, turn the, uh, I normally play hardcore, so my begin pretty high most of the time. So we're going to change that to 128, going to hit the, uh, the play button, and now we're playing. So we can turn this sample on, let's turn the kick on. Now that's running, and we can turn the volume up. However, it's not doing anything because we haven't selected a pattern. So let's select a pattern. So we can hear that a pattern's been selected and it's playing. And now what we want to do is we can add in a snare in the next column. So let's select another pattern. Pretty basic and cool. We'll add in a hi-hat on a different pattern. And let's add in another sound. We can change the patterns of any of those And that is basically how it works. So what we can do is if we like that pattern, we've got a kind of a groove going, I can filter out the bass or a particular pattern by just filtering out that way. So all we're left with is that hi-hat that's playing. We can adjust those filters independently. Also, if I want a different sound now, I can use these twister controls up the top here. We'll change the kick. Oh, it's much heavier.
that's a pretty heavy one. So, that's all well and good. But, what we can do is, let's say we don't like this particular pattern. So, we've just got a kick that's happening there. Just a standard kick. We can press one of these buttons and we enter into this pattern mode. And we can see every single time this red light is actually encountering one of these selectors, it's playing that sample. So we can just turn those off. And then it will play it once every round. Well, and you'll fall over and I will put you back there. But we can pretty much now change this pattern on the fly. And if I like that pattern, I can just now press one of the shift registers, exit back to the main menu, and now that pattern is saved back in there. And that's pretty awesome. Got a new drum kit. Now we've got that hat just hitting on every single beat, or quarter beat, I should say. Let's say I like this groove. It's running really well, it sounds pretty good, and now I wanna save that for future use. What we can do is press one of the bottom shift registers and go to this sort of pattern mode. And now I can just press an empty pattern, and that is saved in there. So we can exit back to the main menu. Let's change it up a bit, different samples. Let's say I like that, it doesn't sound very good, but uh, let's say I do like that, I can save that here. And now I can just jump between the two. Pretty awesome. And these presets stay even if you unplug or turn off the controller. They're in hardware in the actual uh, controller itself. So now that we understand how to use the MIDI Fighter Twister with Tractor's Remix decks, we're going to take what we just did and we're going to layer that over our live performance. And that really allows us to expand the creativity of what would, uh, what a traditional sort of DJ setup would allow us to do quite impressively. Now I play hardcore music normally and I've got a hardcore tune that's loaded in the top right hand deck up here. And I've also got a customized sort of remix pack bank that's loaded in our deck D here. Now what I've got is I've got some crowd noises loaded up here. As you can hear. And some one shots. And I think that's a bit more hardcore appropriate. So let's go with that. And uh, so what I'm gonna do to layer that over the music is I'm gonna hit play and I'm gonna change that track to master because that's gonna be our reference timing for all our samples. And I'm gonna hit play in the top right here of the MIDI fighter at the right time. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, play. And we're gonna bring in these crowd noises gradually. So I'm gonna hit this button and then fade in the crowd noises. Sounds pretty good, perfectly in time. Let's change the crowd noise. Change the pattern of this one shot. On the fly. And then what we might want to do, there's, there is a drop that's coming up, so we might want to continue the beat over the top. So we'll bring in a kick over the breakdown. Then we might want to bring in some additional snares or percussion. There may be some close hats.
My samples are a bit quiet, actually. <laughs> And so now we've got percussion going. And then it's layer it all. So that sort of gives you an idea about what is possible with the MIDI Fighter Twister and Tractor's Remix decks. Really, really cool, very versatile and very powerful. So overall, the MIDI Fighter Twister is an absolutely awesome controller if you use the Tractor Remix decks. As we saw before, you can do some really creative things with them and add so much to your sets and it does make a huge difference once you get really skilled and uh, confident in it. It's the only controller that I've found which allows me to use the Tractor Remix decks intuitively and to their potential as well. Uh, I've tried some others and they just haven't been quite right, I didn't feel, but this one does it and really unlocks that power in a very easy to set up and use way. One thing I do miss from the other MIDI Fighter controllers is the arcade game buttons. They just feel a lot nicer to click on and off than just these buttons. Although these do feel rock solid and quite nice, this is what sold these original controllers for me. But I wouldn't use this with the Tractor Remix decks, it doesn't give me enough flexibility. So this is an awesome controller and this definitely I think will replace the uh, MIDI Fighter Spectra, sorry dude, in my uh, sort of uh, deck location that I have set up there. So, um, also if you're into production as well, this might be something to look at as a control surface. So if you're controlling parameters with EQs or in Ableton or in something else, you can map these sort of um, dials to parameters in software. Um, and yeah, so a lot more versatile, I guess, as a controller. As I said, well built. It's $219 from the DJ Tech Tools website. Head over djtechtools.com, jump on the store there. And um, yeah, good job again, DJ Tech Tools. Awesome stuff. Midi Fighter Twister. Check it out.